wanted to chat with you guys about the history of the labor unions. The origin of the labor unions dates all the way back to the 18th century and the Industrial Revolution in Europe. During this time, there was a huge surge of new workers into the workplace that needed this representation. In the U.S. history of unions, early workers and trade unions played an important role in the, in, for independence. <clears throat> Although their physical efforts for the cause of independence were ineffective, the ideas they introduced, such as protection for workers, became a part of our American history. Now, in the history of America's trade and labor unions, the most famous union remains the AFL, or the American Federation of Labor. This was founded in 1886 by Samuel Gompers. And at its pinnacle, the AFL had approximately 1.4 million members. The AFL is credited with successfully negotiating wage and increases for its members and enhancing workplace safety for all workers. The second um, largest one was the CIO, or the Congress of Industrial Organizations, under John L. Lewis. Now, the CIO went under a huge expansion in, after World War II, and they merged with the AFL around 1955. The union membership and power peaked around 1970. And at that time, the private sector union membership began a steady decline that continues today. And that's because of all of the, the laws that were passed around that time where uh, that guarantee that worker protection that was missing in the past. The need for the unions came from. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> According to the Department of Labor, the 2015 union membership rate was about 11%, and the number of workers belonging to a union were 14.8 million. <clears throat> now, in 1986, the AFL and CIO created union privilege to offer Union Plus members a variety of benefits, including um, AT&T discounts, mortgage programs, auto buying programs, travel discounts, just a variety of different things. Uh, enough about the AFL and CIO. One last thing I wanted to share with you guys in this video is Labor Day. Um, so for over 100 years, Labor Day has been our holiday. Now, Labor Day is observed the first Monday in September, and it pays tributes to both the contributions and achievements of everyday working families. <clears throat> the first Labor Day was celebrated Tuesday, September 5th of 1882 in New York City, <clears throat> following the deaths of 13 workers during the Pullman strike in June of 1894. President Cleveland put reconciliation with the labor movement as a top political priority and Labor Day, labor Day became a federal holiday and grew to become a federal holiday in 1894. Now, during the major economic depression of the early 1890s, the, the Pullman Palace Car Company cut wages in its factories. It discontented workers that joined the American Railway Union, led by Eugene Debs, but they also supported a strike by launching a boycott on all of the cars of the railway railroads. The members across the nation refused to switch the Pullman cars into trains. When these switchmen were disciplined, the ARU, or the American Railroad Union, struck the railroads on June 26th in 1894. Within four days, 125,000 workers on 29 railroads had quit work rather than handle these Pullman cars. Now, the strike, the strike broken up by the U.S. Marshals and some 2,000 United States Army troops <clears throat> that were sent by Glo uh, President Cleveland on the premise that the strike interfered with the delivery of the U.S. mail. Now, during that strike, 13 workers were killed and 57 were wounded, and that's where Labor Day came, came from. Now, what do labor unions really want? They want increased wages. They want raising the standard of living for working class, ensuring safe working conditions, and increasing benefits for both workers and their families. <clears throat>